So 480 horsepower, uh, it, it's a uh, car weighs approximately 2,500 pounds, so uh, it goes. <laughs> My name is Pete Ballantyne and my car is a 2015 Superlight Coupe. Right, so the, uh, the drivetrain, the engine is a LS3 um, crate motor that I got from Jags. Uh, it's a, uh, they call it a LS uh, 376 480. Uh, it's the 480 horsepower uh, version of the LS3 which uh, to, to get that to 480 horsepower they put Chevy puts their hot cam uh, in the engine uh, so I got that from Jegs the uh, the transaxle uh, is a Audi R8 and Lamborghini uh, Gallardo uh, transaxle it's made by Graziano um, and I purchased that directly from Superlight they got a deal with the factory over in Italy that they uh, can get the transaxles and they sell them with a the kit and uh, the clutch is an Audi R8 clutch, uh, which uh, that was quite a, a sticker shock when I when I went to go buy that clutch because uh, you know I was thinking standard clutch is a couple hundred bucks. It was two thousand dollar clutch. <laughs> All right. So uh, what one of the reasons I, I picked the SLC? Uh, I, I really like the styling on the car. Uh, the other the other car I was looking at uh, was the Ultima GTR, and uh, I really like the way the Superlight uh, looks. Uh, I think it. I think it's just a, a better design overall um, than the than the Ultima. Uh, it was styled after uh, the '90s uh, uh, IMSA cars, uh, the LMP cars, uh, was kind of the the look that uh, Superlight was going for, um, and you can kind of see that it, it looks a lot like a, a little Mons car. So uh, some of the, the details on the exterior, uh, the wheels are Ford Star F14s, they, which uh, they came with a kit. Uh, Superlight uh, allowed you to pick the wheels, um, any, any of the Ford Star wheels, uh, and they allowed you to pick the color. Uh, so I went with the uh, F14s uh, in uh, gunmetal gray. Uh, figured didn't really know what color I was going to go with so I figured the gunmetal gray would match anything I I did um, and I, I think they're really good looking wheels the finish on the car I started when I when I bought it it came in red gel coat uh, which super light they advertised that all you had to do is polish up the gel coat and you didn't have to paint it or anything well that's not really the case um, well, after I got the car, it, it's, it had a lot of mold lines on it from the, from the molds, and once you sanded those mold lines down, uh, it was quite clear that the gel coat wasn't going to cut it. So, for my, after I got it on the road, uh, I realized I needed to do a lot of body work, and I wasn't going to get it all done uh, in the spring, and I didn't really want to miss the whole car show season, so I decided to plasti dip it. Uh, for the first uh, season that I that I took it to the shows and everything, um, so I did a got a car kit from uh, DipYourCar.com and uh, dipped it in flash color shift and black, and I uh, think it looked really good. Uh, got a lot of comments on on how good the the car looked. A lot of people were really surprised that it was plastic dip and not paint. After a season with the plastic dip on it, I peeled off the plastic dip, uh, finished up the bodywork, uh, and prime, put primer on it, and took it down to uh, Cincy Vinyl Wraps uh, on the north side of Cincinnati, and they put on the uh, vinyl wrap. Uh, the vinyl wrap is uh, it's a Oracle 970 uh, vinyl in aquamarine with uh, black and silver stripes on it. And uh, Cincy Vinyl Wraps was was fantastic. They they worked with me on figuring out the uh, the color scheme, and I just told them that I wanted some stripes. And uh, actually, I had a picture of a, uh, a Le Mans car. There was a Florida Motorsports car that had was blue with a bunch of stripe uh, swoopy looking stripes to it. And I took that picture down to them and and said, I want something like this see what you can come up with. Uh, so they came up with the, the stripe layout and I think it looks really good. Um.
Um, some of the other little things I've added on the exterior uh, in the headlights, I added some uh, LED um, strip lights for the driving lights and the turn signals. Other things on the exterior, I've got uh, two cameras. Uh, I've got a long range uh, camera and a short range camera. Uh, those are really, the long range camera is basically my rear view mirror because there's, there's no rear view or there's no rear window. Uh, and I've got a monitor uh, in the in the cockpit, so we can so I can see behind me. And then the short range camera is more of a backup camera. It's got a wide angle to it. Uh, helps me when I'm backing up. Really needed the two cameras because if you if you just go with the backup camera when you're driving down the highway, if if a car is behind you, like a car like behind you, and that backup camera, it looks like it's 30 feet away. Uh, and you can't really see anything a long way behind you, so you can't see that cop that's coming up behind you. <laughs> the, the car is, is really unique, and, and so uh, it gets a lot of attention when driving it. Uh, kind of get the idea of what it must be like to be a celebrity, because people are always pulling out their phones, taking pictures, taking video, um, pointing at the car. So it's, uh, it, it draws a lot of attention. Um, and. They get a get a lot of interesting comments and questions about it. Uh, of course, the the number one question I get is what is it, and then I tell them it's a super light coupe, and they say, so what is it? <laughs> so uh, kind of then I explain it's a kit car, and uh, a lot of a lot of people don't really even understand what that is, but. Uh, usually people are pretty impressed that I built this car uh, in my garage, and. Uh, get a lot of people just say, oh, no way, you built that? So that, that's pretty neat. Uh, some of the, the crazy stuff that's happened uh, when, I've, when I've been driving it, uh, probably the, the wildest one was uh, coming to a four-way stop uh, and it, it was a pretty busy, pretty busy intersection on a Saturday morning. It was actually on the way to Cars and Coffee when they were still doing it over in the green. Uh, and. So on Saturday morning, it's really busy, and this guy in a pickup stops right smack in the middle of the intersection, pulls his phone out, and starts taking pictures. And you know everybody's honking at him and everything. And he didn't care. He's going to get his pictures. So uh, that was pretty wild. Uh, doing a photo shoot at the at the uh, the Wright Brothers Airport. Uh, we were moving from one location on the airfield to another location and we had to drive on the taxiway. So of course you have to uh, to yield to any airplanes. And here comes the Cessna 172 and I stopped to let him go by and the Cessna stops and, and both the pilot and, and there's passenger take out their phones and start taking pictures. I, well, that was a new one. I've never had to, had to wait for an airplane to take pictures of me before. Some of the, the comments I get, a lot of people think it's a, a Ferrari or a McLaren or, or um, had, had one guy, kind of funny, an old guy that had his, his grandson with him at a car show and, and he told his grandson it was an F1 car. <laughs> I had to laugh at that one. Uh, another time uh, there was two guys looking at the car and I was kind of standing behind them and uh, and I, could, I couldn't tell what they were saying, but I could tell they were having a little bit of an argument. Uh, and then so I walk up and, and they said, is this your car? And I went, yeah, and I and, uh, said, well, is it a, one of them says, is it a McLaren? And I said, no, it's not a McLaren. And uh, he punches the other guy in the shoulder and goes, see, I told you, you owe me five bucks. <laughs> so, stuff like that happens all the time. Um, so I, I think that's probably the, the, uh, the coolest part of owning the car is just all the attention it gets. Uh, 